This video is sponsored by Babbel. In this week's video, Luke and I head out onto our rewilding project where we find three new and absolutely adorable surprises. Just over the brow of the hill is a very proud mother. And within the rewilding, we now have a wonderful wildflower meadow. It's in full bloom. This is one of my favorite places to come. We have an absolute carpet of wildflowers. Back at the manor, Beryl and I set out to make some red currant jelly from our kitchen garden, but it doesn't go entirely to plan. Okay, everybody, this is a disaster. <laughs> and lastly, my dissertation for my master's is well underway, as I'm now working with an international team of volunteers to transcribe the thousands of letters. This entire section here is Alberta. Right, in the middle of the rewilding project, and it's looking like a rewilding project. <laughs> We've come here to Coltley, to Mapperton Wildlands, because there is some more new life at Mapperton, and Julie doesn't know what it is. Um, Have you guessed? You've, there's a bird, I suspect. It's probably you found a nest of a bird that hasn't been. A bird's been. nest. I, a wouldn't bird's be, I wouldn't be as excited about a bird's no, nest. No, but if you hadn't seen that bird for a while, and the rewilding project yeah. is helping I'll to give, sort of... I'll give you a clue, there's more than one of them. Another foal was born. No, not another foal. Anyway, oh. it's this way. Okay. Come and discover the new babies that have just arrived at Mapperton. I think I know. Now, amazingly, this is the first time we've been together on Mapperton Live for, for a while. How does it yeah. feel? There's so much to do here at Mapperton. That's why you're off in one direction and I'm off in another direction and it's hard to yeah. be in the same direction at the same time. Yeah, well, you've been focused a lot on Alberta and that project and keepers, yes. etc. I've been focused much more on some of the, the countryside issues, the rewilding. And this is a fantastic moment because there, there, are, there are times when I can bring Julie into this world and give her the joy of yeah. discovering something new. Now we're getting close. Yeah. But we're hoping that somewhere just over the brow of the hill is a very proud mother. But there is a question as to whether she really wants us here because she's just given birth and she may be feeling that we're gonna kind of get in the way. Actually, I think she just wants her back scratch. It turns out that that wasn't mum. Well, I was surprised because I was thinking, wow, she's back on her feet really quickly, <laughs> considering she's just given birth like two hours ago. <laughs> um, that is auntie keeping a good sort of lookout. And um, mum is actually lying down, yeah. having a lovely rest there. And I suspect that is where we will find the piglets. Yes. Hello. Come on. Hello, hello. Come and see. Here's mum. And behind mum, three little piglets. There are two female piglets and one boar. You can see that these little tiny piglets are desperately suckling their mum. One of the great advantages of giving birth in the wild is that the sow is not in a small confined space because what can often happen is that pigs can roll over onto their litter and unfortunately squash some of the piglets. Whereas here, there's lots more space. And the moment she starts moving, they can just get out of the way, which I think is very wise because she weighs about half a ton. For those of you who are just joining the channel, we're gonna have lots more content on Mapperton Wildlands, our rewilding project. Please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And um, we will be tracking the story of these piglets over time. And um, one of the extraordinary things here is that it's not just piglets. We've got foals, we've got calves, but we're also hoping that we might get some beaver kits. We went out last night and um, caught some amazing images of the beavers um, eating away, having a good old munch. Um, we haven't seen the female recently, so there's just a possibility 
that she's pregnant and giving birth. Julie, how are you feeling? Well, I just, I love, I mean, I could stay here all day and just watch. I just think it's new life and part of our, the bigger plan here for Matt Britton, our rewilding project, but just to see just how sweet. And it's fragile as fragile, well. Fragile, yeah. So, so delicate. I just want to make sure they're okay. <laughs> I think yeah. they're going to be okay. It's that motherly I, instinct that kicks in. I think they're going to be even better if we leave them be now. Yeah, 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 I agree. So, so let's head off and leave Sage and Onion behind to look after their progeny. Yeah. Se ti piacciono le sfide personali, puoi fare arrampicata. Se ti piacciono le sfide personali, puoi fare arrampicata. Picata. Oh, I was just finishing off a lesson here on Babbel. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the entire world and sponsoring this week's episode. They are fantastic, I have to say, Babbel, because they have massively, massively uh, helped me with my language skills in Italian. You know, when I started learning Italian a couple of years ago, I could pretty much just say ciao. Now I'm able to speak with the locals when I visit Italy. I'm also able to order all of my food and drink uh, at every restaurant and cafe in Italian. I can understand as well. I can ask for directions and it's all because of Babbel. Again, it's one of the top language learning apps in the world, but the other thing that Babbel has really helped me with is my own confidence. I always think of learning another language is almost like getting another degree. Seriously, that's how I think of it. And it's been so important for me as I've been able to travel to Italy and have those conversations and help my confidence grow. So if you're looking just to enhance your confidence and learn a new language, whether it's Italian or one of the other many languages that Babbel offers, I really do urge you to check out Babbel because what it's done for me personally has been huge. I just feel, I think, just a lot more confident. And when I tell people, yeah, I can understand Italian and yes, I can speak Italian, people are sometimes gobsmacked. They say, what? How did you learn Italian? And I say, well, it's through the app Babbel. So do check it out, my promo link down below to get 60% off of your subscription with Babbel and start learning a new language today. You will not regret it. Learning a new language with Babbel has been, been one of the best things I've ever done. Do comment down below and let me know what language you're interested in learning and why. This is one of my favorite places to come. It I have is, to say, I love um, it, love it, love it, everybody. And this time of year is the best possible time to yeah. come because as you can see, we have an absolute carpet of wildflowers and it's, insects and crickets and butterflies. It's so wonderful. I mean, it, it's just wonderful. Um, so I brought my basket and... We've, we've got a purpose for being here today. Yes. Which is not only to show you all the unbelievable environment that we're in here. This is um, known as Mount Pleasant and they are extraordinarily rich in terms of their botany. Now, neither Julie nor I can pretend that we know the names of all the flowers. No. Is that, is that fair to that, say? That is fair to say. I mean, yeah. I think if I'm perfectly honest, I think everybody, it's one of, uh, eventually, if I live long enough, I think it's one of the, you know, if I do another master's or something, um, you know, might really? be sort of in, ecology. In, in ecology? Well, but yeah, the good I do news think is, so, yeah, but I've I got have, to finish Alberta. <laughs> I have brought Julie a present today. And Great. It is the pocket guide to wildflowers. Whereas I'm gonna <laughs> cheat. I'm such an analog person. On my phone, I've got a wonderful app and all I do is I point it at the plant yeah. and it tells me, no, that's not true at all. I know what they all are, actually. It's really encyclopedic uh, knowledge uh, okay. of plant life. That's not true.
I thought I was going to have real problems finding corky fruited dropwort, but it's everywhere. Look at this incredibly delicate flower. And you can see some people might mistake it for cow parsley, but it's not at all. If we look further down into the sward, we found the other plant, which I was trying or hoping to see. And this is bird's foot trefoil, this little delicate butter colored petal of a plant. So, what have you got? Well, I loved every single second, everybody. I have to say, I could stay out here all day, but I think this would be really, really pretty. I don't know exactly what I have apart from- but You've got your you book know, that I gave you. I know, it's, it's buried. You're gonna, you're gonna look them all up when we I get home, aren't we? Up, but but you, have, you have at least got some uh, corky fruited water drop There we word. go. There you go. Well done. And you've got, I think you know what those ones yeah, are. Oxide daisies. Oxide yeah. daisies. Yeah, you've got some knapweed. Yes. You've got lots of grasses. Yeah. It's a magnificent hall. Isn't it just beautiful? And, and where's it going to go now? Well, it's going to go in the kitchen. So I'll put it in the kitchen yeah. and then, you know, I don't know, there's, you know, you want to dry some flowers as well. So I'm not sure, but I think this is a perfect arrangement. I love the blues, the purples. We've got reds in here as well. Beiges, bright yellows, yeah. just the countryside. One of, I think, the amazing benefits of Matt Burton Estate, um, as it is almost a 2,000 acre estate, is that there's lots of foraging, if you like, to be done. So I'm here in the kitchen garden. Yep, we do have one at Matt Burton. I wish I could spend more time in here, but as I think many of you know, watching these videos, Luke and I are pulled in 8,000 different directions because as I try to remind those of you who are tuning in for the first time, that it's not just a historic house that we look after, it's the entire estate. And Beryl, oh. some of you have seen, hello, some hey, of you have seen her before in our videos. So Beryl is, um, Beryl lives in the house um, with Luke and I and makes sure that um, all is secure. <laughs> so, so I always think of Beryl as like our, you know, she's all about making sure that the house is secure because it, of course it has the whole family collect, uh, collection in it. But today we're in the kitchen garden and we are going to pick red currants, everybody. Mm, Look yep. at all these red currants. Yep. So what are we gonna be making, Beryl? We're gonna oh, be making- Red, red currant jelly. Red currant jelly. Yep. Now, Beryl and I are both vegetarian. So, I mean, I, I occasionally eat fish, so technically pescatarian, but Beryl is, you're 100% vegetarian, aren't no, you? No, I'm pescatarian. Oh, she's too. pescatarian as well. There yeah. we go. I eat fish at least three times a week. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But Beryl has, um, so I have a question for Beryl. Because red currant jelly is usually used uh, for yes. lamb. Yes, it's true. It's true. So what are we going to use it for since we're pescatarian? I don't know. I've just put it in the larder for anyone who wants to eat it. It's quite easy to make, isn't it? Oh, it's very easy. It's quick. That's the good thing about it. Well, there's sort of two processes, but um, it is quick to make. It boils up really quickly and sets very quickly. Right, and that's what we're going to be doing, everybody. Making, there's so many red currants here. I know.
What happens if I, th these are quite bitter, aren't they? Uh, yes, yes, I have uh, quite a big seed in the middle. Mm. You I quite like them. them. All right, off we go to make red currant jelly. It's back in the Mavertine kitchen. Um, right, so we're gonna do two kilograms, we've decided. Two kilograms of red currants, yes. Okay, and you can keep the stems on, everybody, so stems are fine. Mm -hmm. Now, we've, we picked quite... No, it's not two kilos. It's not two kilos, oh, wow. Let's keep no, going. That's good. We've picked, let me just go get more. Here, we've picked quite a bit, and you can freeze them as well. So, you can always, wow freeze your red currants if you're doing this one. But look at how beautiful they are. Oh my gosh, Beryl, we've got a long way to go here. So we're gonna use the sort of conventional oven. We're gonna put 200 kilograms, or sorry, two kilograms in here and 800 milliliters of water. Fantastic. And then just simmer away until they're all soft and juicy. And about how long? I'd say hour and a half. About an hour. No, probably not an hour and a half. An hour. But an hour. And maybe an hour and a quarter. Okay. Yeah, I can start them high to start with, and then to get, get it up, get them going, and then. Okay, so we're just gonna get this going, and then again let this simmer for hour. We'll check it because okay. we want it to look well, like it's been cooked through. Oh, definitely, and all the. Yeah, the juice is out of the red currants. So. Yeah, and then the juice is out of the red currants, and then we're going to put it through a sieve. Mm. Yep. Okay, let's just, so we just leave it. Let's just leave it, shall we? Okay. Now, do you think I should pour this in? Um, probably a bit too much to pour. Okay. Do another scoop. Okay. I was just thinking, okay. You probably can pour the next time. Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. So we're I'll getting the juice out. Wow, it's lovely. I'll hold this. So okay. It see yeah. Some juice. Okay. Oh, there's a there's a lip thing. There. Yeah, I'm holding onto it. And pour. You could probably pour through. Oh. That. Might make it easier. Okay. Yes. Didn't even see that. Okay. Here we go. Sorry, Beryl. It's okay. It's like, stand back, stand back, and don't. Okay. That's super. Okay. That's it, that'll do, yeah. Just, just let it strain. And just, we just leave this. Yes. Hmm. And then, tomorrow yep. is the big day. Make it into that, jelly. Then we'll make it into jelly tomorrow, but you have to leave it overnight. Yeah, you can let it really drain through slowly. Slowly get as much juice as you possibly can to make the best red currant jelly for Chris. As many of you know who've been watching Mapperton Live YouTube channel for some time, I'm in the middle of my dissertation and the subject is Alberta Sturgis the ninth Countess of Sandwich. And that's part of the reason, well, actually it's the main reason that I decided to make sure that this muniment room was restored. This is, I think that this room for me is almost like a dedication to Alberta because she was actually an archivist herself and we did a huge fundraiser. So thank you to all of you for uh, who donated to the Alberta Research Project. So. We, I started on a journey earlier this year to create a virtual volunteer program because there are thousands of letters. In these files, most of this side, in fact, actually, all of this is Alberta. This entire section here is Alberta. So we had just kicked off with a huge Zoom um, of around 50 of us from around the world that are helping to transcribe Alberta's letters. It's incredible. And some of her letters are actually like 15 pages long. So here are the letters. And what we've been able to do just for our volunteers is to give, to show them how we have actually sectioned them out. Um, and you can see here, her, uh, her handwriting is really difficult. So this, I already know I can change. This is at, looks like at which there are so many applications to go that perhaps they could not procure 
your mother, but she's crossed out uh, your, but we still keep that in. Procure mother an invitation. Um, however, the letter is charming and says she will do all she can and hopes anyway to welcome you. And this is a word that we couldn't figure out. So when we can't figure it out, we put a question mark and then our guess as to what it is. So this was just showing the virtual volunteers how we took it line by line. But actually what the virtual volunteers will be doing is they will um, be going back up to this page here and they will be transcribing it in a way not like this. This was just to help them. This was an example, but they will be transcribing them as one. Tricky, but super fun. Thousands of these letters. And I think with a group of 50 of us working together, we should be able to transcribe most of her letters. Now you're probably asking how long is this going to take? I mean, this will take a good year, if not longer. And yeah, so you're gonna find me in here, I think throughout the next year, just giving you little updates. But if you do wanna follow along more closely to the journey of Alberta, an American just like me who married into the Montague family, do check out our sister channel, American Viscountess. Back in the kitchen because the red currant jelly is nearly ready. So we've strained the juice and really for the recipe I'm using it 600 milliliters of juice for um, uh, combined with then 450 grams of sugar and that will give you about four to five. So first up what we need to do is just bring this to the boil and wait. Okay, red currant juice is boiling. Now I'm putting in 450 grams of sugar. And all I wanna do right now is stir in the sugar and just make sure that it's dissolved even around the sides. Once I have all of the sugar and I can see that it's all dissolved, which it has, now's the easy part. I'm just going to leave it. Yep, dissolved, dissolved for eight minutes. So I'm going to leave it boiling for eight minutes and then it should be finished and I can start to put it into the jars. Wait, oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, okay, okay, okay. Okay, everybody, this is a disaster. <laughs> I left this because I had to take a phone call and I left it and wasn't watching it. And you can see it's gone everywhere. Oh my God, it's stuck on here. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, everybody, it's like stuck to the stove. Ah! Okay, okay, Every, everybody, it's fine. It's fine. I don't want it to go to waste. And anyway, the good news is that the phone call I just had was like awesome news. <laughs> so it was worth it. It was all worth it in the end. Okay, I'm just gonna clear this up. Um. Here we go. This is what it's going to look like, everybody. So at least I've, let's be honest, the silver lining has been, I have done it the right way. Those of you who are following this recipe, just make sure that you stay the entire time while it's boiling. <laughs> Click the link in the description for 60% off your Babbel subscription.